Hello again everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me Nathan. In this video, I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison between Kilo Code and Augment Code so that you can figure out which one is the best coding agent for your workflow. So both Kilo Code and Augment Code are AI coding agents designed to supercharge your workflow right inside VS Code. They can help you write, refactor, and task complex code with natural language prompts. Now, on the surface, they might seem pretty similar, but when you start using them day to day, you'll notice some key differences. So in this video, I'm going to compare them side by side across a few key areas such as installation and integration, pricing, performance, and overall user experience. That way, you'll have a clear idea of which one's actually worth using for your setup. First, we'll talk about the setup. Both Augment Code and Kilo Code are extensions that you can easily install on popular IDEs like VS Code or JetBrains. Once you've got them installed, you'll need to sign up for an account, and after that, you'll be able to use the extensions. For Augment Code though, you'll have one less extra step, and that is to index your code base. This step is required so that Augment can make tailored suggestions and explain common practice patterns. So just let it index your code base, usually it only takes a few seconds. On the other hand, codebase indexing is optional in Kilo Code, so you can start using it right away. Now, will performance be affected if you skip indexing in Kilo Code? Well, we're going to learn more about that in the performance test. But for now, let's move on to the interface. So here's the chat box for Augment Code. If you have used coding agents like GitHub Copilot before, you'll notice that the interface is very similar. You can send prompts here or toggle auto-approval and then activate ask mode to ask questions without changing the code base. And then you can also select the model to use over here. The models currently available on Open Code are Sonnet 4.5, Sonnet 4, GPT-5, and Haiku 4.5. Augment Code support fewer models when compared to Kilo Code because originally Augment Code doesn't even want to add model selector to the extension. But as time goes on and it changes the pricing to credit-based plans, more affordable models are added so users can save those credits. Next, Augment Code can attach image, enhance prompt, and select specific context as well. And now the indexing is also finished here. Hmm, we can see it describes the project's key characteristics and features and then it proposed some questions that you might want to ask about. But we'll stop right here and move on to explore Kilo Code setup next. First, Kilo Code support literally every AI models that are publicly available. When you sign up with Kilo Code, it might default to something like Swanet 4.5, but if you open the model selector, you'll find about 500 different models, anything from Gemini, GPT, Claw, to DeepSeek, GLM, Mistral, and so on. Any model you want to try, simply search for it and it will show up here. The UI for Kilo Code is also very similar to GitHub Copilot. Uh, you can send prompts and then use the coding agent to make changes for you. But what's unique here is that Kilo Code also has five different interaction modes for its agent. Each of these modes will define Kilo Code's behavior and determines how it handles requests. The default is code mode where Kilo Code acts like a skilled software engineer. It's best for writing code, adding features, or fixing simple bugs. Then there is architect mode, which turns Kilo Code into more of a technical planner, where it can design systems and lay out implementation plans. There is also ask mode, which simply answers questions without touching the code base, debug mode that helps you run tests and troubleshoot issues, and then orchestrator mode, an advanced mode for breaking down and solving complex tasks. Again, Kilo Code has the code base indexing feature, but it's optional and most of the time, you don't need it as it searches for the right context automatically. And then you can also add context here, adding any folder, images, or git comments. And then you can also enhance from with this button. Before we test the performance of these extensions, let's quickly talk about the pricing. Honestly, this is one of the things I really like about Kilo Code because the pricing basically depends on whatever API model you decide to use. If you go with Gemini 2.5 Pro, you'll pay Gemini API rates. If you choose DeepSeek, then you follow DeepSeek's pricing. Kilo Code also supports third-party providers, which opens up some great options. Like the GLM coding plan, which starts at just $3 a month. And the best part is, you only pay for the Kilo Code extension itself if you need team features or want to scale up to an enterprise plan. If you're on the free plan, you're really just paying for the AI model you use, and that's it. 
Augment Code on the other hand starts at $20 per month which grants you 40,000 monthly credits. If you need more then you can get the higher plan or add 24,000 credits for $15. Now you probably wonder how much you can get for 40,000 credits? Well the answer is it depends on your usage. Most of the time though credit based plans are really hard to figure out. There is a calculation by one user on reddit here and as Augment Code users did protest sharply when they announced the new plan, it's safe to say that it's really much more expensive than before. KiloCode, however, believe transparent, usage-based pricing is the way to go. If you use Gemini, you pay for Gemini. If you use GPT-5, then you pay for GPT-5. There is no hidden markups and no extra fees. Also, when there is a new model released, KiloCode usually partners with the provider and offer the model for free of charge even if it's only for a limited time. When I record this video, the Minimax M2 model is currently free in KiloCode as we can see here. There is also the Grok Code Fast 1 model which is also free to use at the moment. And when there is a stealth model being released for public testing, you can usually try it for free like the Supernova model here. However, note that these free models might use your data to improve the model. Alright, it's time to do a little test. I'm not going to do a deep test in this video as it will take the whole day. On the screen here, I have the code base for Forum, which is a popular open source community and social network website. You can learn more about it at its GitHub repo here, but the Forum code base basically has over 6000 files and 1.7 gigabytes in size. So suppose I'm a new developer working on this code base and I've been given a task to work on the profile picture upload system. I don't know where in this code base to look, so I'm going to toggle the as mode and then send a simple prompt find code that handles when user uploads their profile picture. Alright, open code and starts working on the request here, and then after a while it will start reading over relevant files. And now it understands the profile picture upload flow and describe the process back to us. Alright, let's scroll up a bit. At the start here, we have the front end component showing the code for handling image upload. And then there is image upload action, the javascript code for sending the HTTP request. After that, there's the backend controller in Ruby that processes the image, and then there's also an alternative endpoint here, and then the core business logic is in the service layer. Um, it seems the chat scroll is a bit buggy here, it keeps returning to the previous section, but for now, uh, we can see the next step in the flow, which is the model layer here, where the carrier wave library is used to process the file uploaded. And then the uploader class, which provides EXIF data stripping, and so on. There is also key features here, such as validation, maximum image size is 8 megabytes, as well as allow extensions. And then security, processing, side effects, and then the flow in a nutshell. It's very informative and definitely a great result from Augment Code. Now let's try the same task with Kilo Code. I will change the mode to as first and then I will put the prompt here and click submit. Let Kilo Code process the request. After a moment, it will start with searching for the right context and then it will start reading over relevant files very similar to Augment Code before. And then Kilo Code still search for relevant files here and then it reads the files. And after a while, it has found the profile picture upload implementation in forum. Let it write the description first, and then we will scroll over from the top. Okay, KiloCode has finished responding here, uh, let's go over its report. First, KiloCode starts with the model layer over here, whereas Augment Code starts from the front end layer. So the model layer uses carrier wave for handling uploads and then there is the uploader class that handles the actual file upload and then the controller which delegates to the surface layer. By the way, we can click on this link to open the file in the editor. Uh, the same can be done with Augment as well, just click on the file name here. But next, let's continue with the kill code report. Mm, so here it describes the front end part, such as the forms created with embedded Ruby, and then the JavaScript code for handling the image upload. It ends with a summary of the flow, describing the journey from user selects the file to updating the record. So yeah, both extensions are pretty fast and it can describe the flow in a way that is easy to understand. There are subtle differences on the output such as KiloCode here has a bit more detail about fetching user picture from social media and then Augment provides the complete process in a nutshell but overall we can understand and start working on the profile picture upload system with the information provided by both extensions. Next, let's compare the overall user experience. 
If we look at Kilocode here, there are little features and details that actually make it very convenient. First, Kilocode has lots of transparency. You can see at the top here, there is the cost incurred by the session so far, and then there are bar charts over here. Uh, those aren't just for show, as they actually reveal the steps taken by Kilocode to fulfill your request. The gray bars indicate when AI reasons and response, and then the green ones for checkpoint and completion. The pink one here is for tool usage, and you can click on any of the bars to scroll to that step. Next, you can also click on the task to expand it and then see more details. There is the context length calculation, how much is used for the session and how much is left, and then there is the token usage, showing the amount of tokens sent to the AI model, how many we received back, and how many tokens are cached. This information allows you to calculate and see whether the cost is really accurate. Now, calculating tokens are quite confusing, so I tried to use ChatGPT, and it seems the result is correct. You can try to calculate the tokens here yourself if you want to. And then for options, Kilocode really has lots of customization options. You can add MCP servers through the MCP marketplace over here. Just search for the MCP and then click install to add it to Kilocode. And then if you're using many different model providers, then you can create API profiles for each provider. For example, here I have the GLM coding plan profile for when I want to use it. Next, you can also add more interaction modes as Kilocode allows you to freely create your own custom modes. There is also the mode marketplace where you can install modes from the community. So while Killer Code just works out of the box, it has optional customizations that can really improve your workflow. For Augment Code here, it's actually a bit more basic as it has tabs to look for the tasks and then this one for changes made by the agent. And then in the option panel, you can set up MCP and integration services and so on. And in the chat session itself, you can't see the costs incurred by the session or the steps taken by the AI model. If you want to look at specific parts in the conversation, you need to scroll over the chat yourself to find it. And that's it, there's really not much else to explore here. Alright, now that we've compared how Killer Code and Document Code works, it's time to decide which one is the best coding agent. Now this is going to be subjective, but I do prefer Kilo Code over Augment Code. I mean, sure, Augment Code might be a little easier to get started with, but that simplicity comes with trade-offs, like higher pricing, less transparency, and less control over the configurations. As AI coding tools move from being just fun experiments to becoming part of our everyday workflow, developers are going to want more control and transparency. And if you work for a company, you'll definitely realize that managers want clearer visibility into causes to measure return on investment. Also, everyone wants better results from their coding agents, which means more customization to fit their unique cases. And that's exactly where Kilocode shines. Its usage-based pricing means you only pay for what you actually use. There is no surprise rate limits and definitely no sudden price hikes. Kilocode isn't trying to profit of how much you interact with the AI model. It also doesn't force you to use specific models, although it does have some tips and guidelines for choosing the best model. On top of it all, Kilocode is also open source, so if you want to check out the code, learn how it's built, or help improve it, then you can visit its GitHub repo. So yeah, both Kilocode and Augment Code are solid tools for serious developers, but if you care more about control, customization, and transparency, then I would say go with Kilo Code. Alright, that's it for this video. Hopefully, you have a better idea of which coding agent fits your workflow better, whether it's Kilo Code or Augment Code. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan and I help you build profitable apps and projects using AI and other tools. Make sure to subscribe if that's something you find useful. Don't forget to like this video, turn on the notification bell, all that good stuff as it really helps the channel to grow. With that being said, thanks so much for watching until the end. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye!